models have featured since the earliest days of the Thrust WSH project. In fact, the seeds of the project were sown when a historic wooden model, lost for many years, unexpectedly resurfaced in the pages of a book. Richard Noble takes up the story. Way back in 1952, as a six-year-old kid, I saw John Cobb's jet boat Crusader sitting there on uh, Temple Pier. At a time when aeroplanes had propellers, there was this guy with a boat powered by a jet. And it was the most beautiful looking thing you ever saw. Unfortunately, a few days later, Cobb was doing a run. It all went terribly wrong. The boat broke up and uh, he was killed. Many, many years later, there was a wonderful book produced called Railton Man of Speed, written by Carl Ludgvison, which is the story of Reed Railton. He had uh, been one of the two designers of Crusader. In the book, we then discovered that he'd been terribly upset by the accident, of course, because Cobb was a close friend of his. And he spent 18 months designing a new boat. In other words, this was going to be Crusader 2. This was going to be the next one. He was taking all his knowledge and all his experience from Crusader 1, putting it into this new design. I got the book and I was reading through this and I turned the page and there was the picture of this model. And this was his advanced model. The model had been built by National Physical Laboratory in 1954. It had kind of got lost. I was able to track down the current owner and I was lucky enough to, to buy it, which is great. So we took the model and we scanned it with a company called Adqual in Derby. And um, from that, we started producing models. And that was amazing. We saw this thing zapping around at 50 miles an hour on a lake. And so this model was, uh, was the lead to the whole project. While conducting trials with their model of Crusader 2, now dubbed C2, Noble and his team realised that the recent advances in technologies, techniques and materials could be used to create a new, modern challenger for the 40-year-old World Water Speed record. Building on his experience with C2, engineer and model builder Len Newton led the construction of C3.1, a jet-powered 1.7-metre model of naval architect Lorne Campbell's design. Testing began in Cornwall, in parallel with computer modelling of aero and hydrodynamics. The C3.1 test programme achieved speeds approaching 100 miles per hour, but it highlighted the sensitivity of hydroplanes to even the smallest changes in the craft's attitude. A new approach using actively controlled hydrofoils to maintain control at speed looked feasible, but further trials using models would be needed to provide real-world test data. The Ugly Boat, a low-speed test book containing sensors and actuators, was used to successfully test the principles of actively controlled hydrofoils. However, testing the hydrodynamics of supercavitating hydrofoils would need a much faster model, capable of running at over 200 miles per hour. A three-metre-long mould was made, and from it the team has built two carbon fibre models. The first, C3.2A is a non-operational display model to be used at the many shows and exhibitions that the team has attended over the last 18 months. This brings us to C3.2B, our fully operational quarter-scale model. Under construction for most of 2024, it contains miniature versions of the control systems, sensors and telemetry that will feature on the full-sized record craft and will operate as a proof of concept at speeds of over 200 miles per hour. James Morton has been overseeing the build. This is a key moment in the programme. This craft will prove whether we've got a project or not, because we'll be running about 200 miles an hour, maybe more, using the hydrofoil system. This quarter scale model is about 10 foot long. Uh, it's been uh, autoclaved and cooked off, and we put the uh, honeycomb foil down. Again, that's gone through the process of being under pressure and then cooked off. What you're seeing at the moment is the inner skin being laid up and by hopefully by the beginning of next week this will be ready for, to go into the um, autoclave for cooking and then it'll be coming out of the mould hopefully in the middle of next week. By the end of April 2024 the hull was out of the mould and ready for the internal structure to be fitted. However a succession of heavy crashes at Formula One Grand Prix especially Monaco, meant that three DCM's technicians were kept busy fabricating new carbon fibre parts for their Formula One customers. With progress interrupted, the test programme, optimistically planned for the summer, was postponed. 
In the meantime, the actuators for the active hydrofoils were 3D printed and finished by 3T additive manufacturing. 3D printing was also used in the construction of the model's aerodynamic fins and engine air intake by specialists ProTotal. Back at 3DCM, carbon fibre parts gradually progressed and by early August the model's deck was nearing completion. Meanwhile, work begun on the hull's internal structure. Here we have the 10-foot uh, model, the quarter scale model, of, we call it C32B, being built at 3DCM. We've done all the carbon work, carbon supplied by PRF. Um, you can see we're in the middle of putting the structure inside the hull at the moment. Um, and what we're going to do is take the cowling off. I can show you the inlet um, and then I'll take the inlet out and I can show you some of the structure within. So now you can see more of the structure. Basically, we've got two longitudinal bulkheads made out of uh, carbon uh, with a honeycomb, aluminium honeycomb within. Um, we've got the, the inlet at the front here. This is designed by Butch Dalrymple Smith, who is an absolute genius um, and made by Prototol. And they uh, are rapid prototypers and it's amazing. It's incredibly light, incredibly strong. Um, and here you can see some of the supporting structures. So at the front here, we've got all the support for the, for the inlet. Um, we're going to have the batteries here. This will be completely enclosed in. We've, seen, we've already got some pressure tappings here. I don't know if you can see those, but uh, they'll be taking, we'll be measuring pressure as we, uh, on, the, on the outside of the hull as we uh, progress through the testing process. Um, and our front air, uh, hydrofoils will be fitting here which are controls will be fitting here. Then we've got the engine here. This plate is just there for reference. It's so that we can um, ensure that the engine goes in square and in the right place. So we just, well, that'll come off and it'll reveal the engine mounts. Uh, the fuel tanks, one there, one there with a saddle tank in the middle underneath the engine here. Long tailpipe going out the back with these various panniers either side con uh, containing controls, fuel system, all that kind of stuff. At the back here, we'll have the hydrofoil controls in here, and also we'll have the steering. So the hydrofoil controls come out through these tubes here. The steering will come out through here. And these, are, you can see the, the mounts for the hydrofoils, and they also have the, the rudder system there. Um, all these frames and bulkheads were made by three, the guys here at 3DCM. Um, having been made, they were then given to a company called Hydromar on the Isle of Wight, who did all the uh, water jet cutting to, for, to profile and also put all the holes in. So, and it's worked out really well. All the, all the holes are lined up. The, the, part, the parts have gone together very well. And this morning, Josh has been able to fit them in pretty quickly. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of fettling to do yet, especially at the front end. Um, but uh, it's all going together quite nicely. My name is Joshua Hanna. I'm working with the guys here at 3DCM uh, on this amazing boat. I've done a lot of the fitting work, a lot of the making sure things fit into the boat and things all fit nicely. This was just a bare shell um, and I've made sure that everything on the inside of this, all the, all the aluminium honeycomb, all the Nomex, all of that fits in nicely. There's no overlaps and yeah, just everything fits basically. So my name is Ben Conn, um, I work at 3DCM. So this is the deck for the boat. It's the major aero surface, uh, other than underneath. This is just gonna help it cut through the air, basically. As work on the structure continued, preparations were being made for fitting the boat's internal components. An AMT Lynx gas turbine, similar to that used in military drones, has been chosen as the craft's power plant, developing 350 pounds of thrust. The engine was tested and then temporarily mounted into the hull to check tolerances. Jonathan Tubb from Fuel Cell Specialists Advanced Fuel Systems used a 3D scanner to check the space allocated for the model's fuel tanks. Using a new lightweight material specially made for the project, custom fuel cells were constructed and test fitted. Meanwhile, master craftsman Les Thorne set to work turning the wooden former for the model's inner cowling, which will encase the engine and jet pipe. Made to the same exacting tolerances as the rest of the model, the resulting former is a work of art in its own right. 
bonding and building work at 3DCM continued, but by late September, it was clear that the company's Formula One work was compromising progress on C3.2B. By mutual agreement, the model was moved to composite specialist GTR for fitting out and completion. We've now moved the hull down to GTR, Global Technologies Racing. They're sort of Skunk Works training base down at Littlehampton, which they very kindly allowed us to come down here, which has been brilliant. We had to get out of 3DCM because they're so busy on the Formula One work as the season starts to ramp up towards next, you know, for next year's cars and stuff. Um, so yeah, so we're, we've now got some of the hardware going into it, including the cassettes which um, operate the, the hydrofoils, the motors that drive the, uh, the, the incident uh, control of the hydrofoils. Um, I don't know if you want to have a look quickly at some of this stuff. This is the boxes, that the drivers, the controllers for the motors. Um, we've got the height gauge, the, 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 the uh, ultrasonic, ultrasonic to look down on the water level, on the water, and then gives us a, gives the information to the clever stuff that um, works out where the hydrofoil incident should be. This board was made by Leeds University, designed and built by Sean and his team in the bill. And basically it's an ESP32 dual core processor running um, the hydrofoils mainly. Uh, it does also the pitch roll your height using an AHRS system, uh, auto heading reference system. So it looks at where the boat is in the magnetic field of the earth and it knows which way it's going and which way it's up and where level is. The ultrasonics are looking at the height. The AHRS system is looking at where, what, whether the boat's level, pitching left, right or up or down, and then that will adjust the force accordingly to, to bring the boat level, to keep it level and flat. That's the idea of it. All these um, tiny tubes are the uh, pressure, pressure taps. Um, we've got surface pressure tappings, and they will read, uh, they'll be read by a, a scanny valve system, and that will provide us with information on what, what, uh, air, uh, what airflow and we get it under the boat and on top of the boat. We've got pressure tappings everywhere on, the, on this thing. That is the FADEC unit, full authority digital engine control. Unit that controls the uh, gas turbine, that controls the startup. It brings it up to idle, then it gives you full control using sticks, controls, or any sort of lever system to put the engine up to full power and back down. And then when it actually shut, when you shut the engine down, it also does a cooling cycle. So it cools the engine, stop it, stop heat creep into the bearings etc and any sort of problems you get with the engine it'll shut down it, it's just it's sensing the speed of the rotors um, the fuel there's a pump and a set of solenoids in there which control the start up and the running of the engine so yeah that's a full control system everything's in there right well we've got the uh, co2 um, air bottle here with an automatic um, uh, trigger which is um, triggered by water in flux here so if the boat did get into any trouble and founder when the water reaches this level the this bottle will get triggered the air goes rushing down this tube and fires off this um, sort of balloon at the end it's more like a barrel of air which um, this was made by a company called sea safe on on the isle of Wight and cows actually um, and i've got a, a, a video of it inflating it's quite impressive so it gives you about 30 kgs of, of flotation, which um, coupled with all the rest of the, the flotation areas we've got in the boat is, is plenty. It gives, I think in total, we're probably gonna have about 140 kgs of flotation, which will keep it up um, and therefore it can be rescued. The weight of the finished model is crucial to its performance. With the major components placed in C3.2B structure, the engine and tailpipe were test fitted and then with the intake and deck in place, the model was weighed to check that it remained within spec. 85.3 is good. That's within the, uh, the margins we were looking at because we haven't got any of the fuel system in or any fuel. The fuel itself is about eight or nine kilos and the fuel system probably be about another three. Um, we're missing the hydrofoils and some of the electrics. Once we got it off the hook, we've now put a bar under it that was the theoretical, that's um, Lorne Campbell's theoretical wish for, one, two, three, five. But we know the CG has actually dropped, we want the CG to have dropped back a bit because um, to, to uh, uh, basically to match the uh, hydrofoils which have dropped back a bit. So 
this uh, this CG does look also look rather good because that's one two, what is that one two one zero, isn't it? Now? Yeah. Because it's yeah. just that's one two three five, that's twenty five mil back, so it's one two. So one it's zero, on its, which is it's great. on its balance point now. Yeah. Yeah. The fuel doesn't make a lot of difference because it's sort of sitting above the above Centre the CG. Of CG yeah. so. um, and we're struggling to find anything that's really missing, major, major parts missing. So we're very, very happy with that. Work has continued through the winter. All of the control, sensor, telemetry, safety and fuel systems have been installed and rigorously tested. And the model has been painted. As spring approaches and the weather improves, the next step will be low speed flotation and system tests before the team head to a body of water large enough to allow them to run the model at its design speed of over 200 miles per hour. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for project updates and you'll be the first to hear how testing goes.